It is not beyond time. I think when I started this build, I said it would take me one day. It's been over a year. I suck. Sorry. Hand tool build. Let's finish this, shall we? So the thought was take a fence post, essentially a 4x4 chunk of uh, mahogany and or sapili or I'm not entirely sure what it was at this one. I think it's sapili. And take that and build a guitar out of it using hand tools. And I did, mostly. Messed up a few times because I'm a bit silly. So I need to make a nut, fit some hardware, make a bridge, put some strings on. I mean, it's not much. It's just been ever so slightly scary because it might disintegrate. Come on then. Now this finish, this is a perfect example of uh, the guitar finishing oil finish. This is Crimson Guitars guitar finishing oil. A few coats, a few applications, and uh, well, I mean, look at that. I can't wait to get to play it. I'm gonna start with the bridge. This tape's been on here for a while and it's uh, gonna be a bit of a pig to remove, I think. It's gonna be leaving residue, so don't leave masking tape on anything for longer than a few days if you can help it. I'm a fool. So my masking should be a tad smaller than the actual bridge, which it is. So I'll be able to glue on most of that surface and uh, be done with it. Karma for not finishing the guitar earlier. Mm -hmm. I deserve this. I feel some scraping coming on in my uh, immediate future. I might have underbuilt this. There's quite a bit of flex here. Uh, once the bridge is glued on, I'm hoping that that is not an issue and uh, she doesn't fall apart. We shall see. Okay, with that scrape clean, I can see accurately that this tracing is uh, exactly the right size and I need to make it just a fraction bigger now. So I'm going to add one millimeter to the back and uh, two millimeters to the back and that'll do. That is actually, that's, that's wide enough. Isotunes, Crimson 10. Use it. I am gonna, I'm gonna make a cut down here, uh, slightly longer than I need, and then I'm gonna maybe just split it. I'm not going to split it. I need to find a saw that can do that. The wise thing to do is flatten this before I cut it off the big bit. Hmm. I'm not sure I want that in my bridge. When I miss it, oh, just about. It's just could just be off the edge. I'm gonna go a little bit more.
Yes, I need to get a bit of sore in my life. That is an embarrassing cut. But hey, yeah, there you go. This wood is an absolute joy to work with. Like, ah, there we go. Uh, onto the plane, just because. Okay, so to avoid this, I've just gone on the other side, played that nice and flat. Hmm. Actually, <laughs> need to do a little bit more of that. And uh, that's going to be the gluing surface. This is all going to be carved away. Uh, there's no risk of that not causing any trouble five years down the line, making the bridge delaminate or something. The way the plane works, essentially the, the front section here, the toe, sets the flat and then once you've set that you move the pressure to the back of the plane and that follows the flat otherwise you're just going to create a uh, an infinite curve like reality i am fully aware that uh, the top of the guitar is curved and then i'm going to need to set that i want to start from a nice flat and then once i've got the shape right I'll figure out what that curve is and see how that works out. But thank you for shouting at me. Pattern maker's vice of awesomeness. Sadly not the vintage version, but uh, still very cool.
It's all about that there work holding, I tell you. Oh yeah. Okay, I, I really rather enjoy using uh, tools for random things that they were not designed for. And here, what I've got is my uh, inlay jig. It's a Crimson Guitars tool, of course. And uh, it's acting like a bench hook, so that's gonna hold it onto the workbench. But also, I'm using it as a shooting board, essentially, because uh, I'm using a slightly larger plane than I should have. My block plane needs to be sharp and I can't be bothered right now. But uh, I really want to edge up on that line. And this is the way to do it. I could do with something there to, to hold it against. But uh, yeah, we get in there. Well, that went well. I could very, I could use a leveling beam here as well. But that's not necessary. This is the top, that's the gluing surface, so you carve away from that. Any tear out's going to be on that side. Now, cutting end grain like that, if you use a little bit of water, it makes the whole thing go easier. Super fine cuts, less tear out. All the good stuff. But mummy, why isn't he using a file or a leveling bin? Well child, it appears that he's a masochist. In fact, yes, I'm fairly sure. Ben Crow is just a fool and a masochist. Fair point. Obviously, supremely chunky, and uh, and there's a radius in there. So, uh, sandpaper on here. Let's get that radius sorted, and uh, we can remove a lot of height.
That was a bad idea. I just unnecessarily aerosolized that uh, carcinogenic dust. This is done now. Well, that there is it. Oh, yes. All righty. <laughs> so crimson crimson guitars ruler with a zero in the centre so you can sort of figure out bits and pieces. Makes things like this quite easy. Or do we just match the line? Yeah, we just match the line. Oh, why try geometry when you can just use a marking gauge? <laughs> oh, you hilarious. That, uh, that marking gauge line lined up perfectly with the one I've drawn just now. Yeah, there we go. Same result. Yeah, just mark down all the way down. Essentially, I can start playing with some carving. Which I tell you is not going to be quite as fun as it uh, should be because. Uh, well, I have to do it entirely by hand. Who am I kidding? I love it. So I've got my lines set using the marking gauge, actually. That's the height running off the, uh, the radius gluing surface now. There we go. And then our copy. Copy that. Go from there. Uh, I don't really want to squish this in the vise, actually. But uh, I have a curved surface. I could. Do you know what? Masking tape and super glue, actually, on the edge of that should do fine. Oh, even better.
I'm not going to get this glued on today. I absolutely know that. Okay, judging by how knackered I feel right now, uh, not necessarily by the progress, and uh, by the sheer terabytage of footage that I have created, I'm gonna call this a video. It is, it is the penultimate video. It's almost the end of this, uh, Oh, too long build series. Uh, I am very much looking forward to finishing it. But uh, at this stage, <laughs> long voice. at this stage, we have uh, the bulk of a bridge. Given a little bit more time uh, to, to do this, and I have to leave right now to get a, a kid to where it needs to be. Uh, given a bit more time, I'm going to come up with some more refinements and some more bevels and bits and pieces. Glue this on. We're going to install the saddle, intonate, all of that jazz. String the guitar up and hear her play in the next episode. And I will not make you wait months for that next episode. I am finishing the SG build and the hand tool build imminently while the cowrie is under finish. And then I'm going to finish that one too, and I'm not going to know what to do with myself because I will have no current projects ongoing. Anyway, please, <coughs> please click like, please subscribe, please let me know what you think of this process, this build, this guitar, uh, this insane luthier who uh, will, well, keep coming back. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Have a good one.